Hi, Ted. How are you? It's good to have you back. Uh, yeah. We were talking about tax lien certificates last time and that sort of stuff. Just right. review for me again, in case somebody missed the first one. What are tax lien certificates? Okay. Uh, in all states in the United States, in all counties, if people don't pay their tax, what happens is the county now is going to have a shortfall. They won't be able to pay the county employees. So the legislature passed the law. Everybody must pay property tax. So all states have to pay property tax. In half of the states, if you don't pay your property tax, they're going to issue a tax certificate. I'm going to just reach show you. It's just a piece of paper issued by the county. All right. So that piece of paper, if you if you go in and buy a tax lien certificate, buy the certificate, you're going to earn interest on your money. So it's an alternative investment for people that want a safe, secure investment. So you can't buy them from me. You invest with the government, you get the money back from the government. So that's what a tax lien certificate is. Now you have no rights to the property when you buy a tax lien certificate. You can't go on the property, you can't bother the owner, you can't do anything else. All you bought was a county certificate that's gonna pay you, depending upon the state, 16, 18, 24, up to 36% interest. So that's a tax lien certificate. But so all of the states and all of the counties can sell tax defaulted property. And that means same thing, people didn't pay the property, property tax. So in a place like Texas or California or Washington state or New York, if you don't pay your property tax, the local government, meaning the tax collector and the treasurer, the tre treasurer's got the most power, they will come in and they will confiscate the property. And when they do that, they're gonna push you off the property and they're gonna resell it. And the starting bid is gonna be very close to the back taxes and they eliminate, they delete the mortgage and the deed of trust. So that's what the business is. You can buy tax defaulted properties for 10 and 20 cents. You can buy tax liens for $2,000 all the way to 2 million. This is kind of cool. I mean, I was a series seven, which is the big boy, uh, securities advisor and, uh, for almost 30 years. They never taught us about this. My brokers never talked to me about it. I'm sure nobody's brokers ever talked to them about it. What's the scoop? Well, the challenge is, it's difficult for people to understand this, but everything in the United States has to do with money. So there is no commissions paid on tax certificates. So your attorney probably won't sell you any tax certificates unless you go there and get instructions and then they'll help you, but they're gonna charge you by the hour. So a broker, they don't even teach them about it because there's no commission. So how is whatever the brokerage company is well, you, gonna make you, money? With, you with just this. hit it. Uh, the broker doesn't have the commission, so why pay about it? I mean, exactly. if you go with your broker, you're gonna be broker, I'll guarantee that every that's time. That's right, you're gonna be broker, that's right. That, that's yeah. the way it works. So I've got a lot of Canadian clients, actually, students. Can so they do I, this or do you have to be a US citizen to do this? No, 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 Canadian citizens love this, okay? Actually, anywhere they speak English or you can work with American domination in dollars, you can do this. So I have clients in Singapore, I have in Australia, the kingdom, but most of them come from Canada. All right, so the Canadians love this because you can sit at home in Canada. I'm gonna give you an example before we finish of clients that are sitting in their basement. A lot of people in Canada have a basement because a nice warm place in the winter and they have an office with their computers and so on and they buy online in the United States. All right, so the tax lien and tax deed business is pretty much online now. So you can buy from all of the countries that I've just mentioned. So any Canadian that wants to get involved, now's the time to start. On our last interview, you talked about tax default properties. Now you're talking about tax liens. Which one do I wanna do? Okay, if you're really conservative, you got a lot of gray hair, your grandmother and grandfather. No, I just don't have much hair about anymore tax lien certificate because they're very conservative. So here's what happens with the tax lien certificate. You take your money out. Then what you do is you invest it directly with that county. Okay. The county takes your money and they, in return, send you a certificate. All right. Now the certificate, you just take the certificate. It's a passive investment and you put it on your desk and then you sit on your rusty dusty. There is no work to do because the government is waiting for the people to pay their tax. When the people do pay, the government will get their check. They'll forward a check to you. You get 100% of your money back and then the, the high interest rate. I'd say 95, 
of all these certificates are going to pay you. And those are the numbers I get from the county. So you're going to get your money. So they're very conservative investment. Tax deeds, on the other hand, are you going to get real estate? So that's a real estate play. And what does that mean? That means you're going to get a slightly used and abused property. Uh, there's a lot of junk in that business. You don't want to buy that. But there are other properties that just need to be painted and cleaned up. So you need to understand the real estate business so you can buy them for 10 oh. and 20 cents on the dollar, sell for anything you want. So I'm buying a piece of real estate. I need to pay attention to what it is, actually. Exactly. But if, I'm buying the, if I'm buying the tax lien certificates, I don't really care what condition the property's in. Well, you do care. And I recommend that you look at it or have, have someone look at it. Or we can teach you to use the GIS mapping system or Google Maps, whatever. You, you want to make sure that what you buy is okay. Now, I said, okay, it doesn't have to be pristine. Why do you want it? Because if they don't pay a tax certificate, you're going to get that property. You, you could end up with property. Yeah, uh, without a mortgage and without a deed of trust. But you could get the property. So, so I, knew not, lesson, I explained I, a couple, they got the property now. But they had looked at it first and they didn't mind at all. So I can do it online. Yes. Uh, I remember I went to an auction as a young guy years and years and years ago. I didn't buy anything. I was stupid. Yeah, uh, I well, wish I had. Can I, I, I can go to the auctions, right? Right. You can go. Listen, I prefer to go to the physical auction. Okay. Why? Because I can look around the room and see who's bidding and how they're bidding. And you can tell by tone of voice when the person's run out of money. They bid 9,000 and the next bid is 9,100. Well, you know, that guy's run out of money. I guess you want to come up. up with. Yeah. Yeah. So you know what, when to bid and when not to bid. Because so we're, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say, you make your money in this business when you buy at the auction. They're easy to sell. If I can buy a property 10 cents on the dollar and it's worth $100,000, $100, all that margin belongs to me. So what I'm going to do is if I buy it at 10 cents, I'm going to sell it at 50 or 60 cents right now because there's all those fixer-uppers and flipper guys looking for property. So, so I do, I do, get rid of it. do I do the big ones or the little ones? Well, start with the smaller ones because you want to make sure you know what you're doing. And then or if you get a coach, one of our coaches will guide you through it. Listen, I have clients. Oh, well, yeah, let me tell you about a Canadian investor. Guy lives in Regina, Saskatchewan. Regina's with an R, okay? So you can giggle about that if you want. All right, so he buys property in the United States. with Following the steps that I've showed him to do, he started out in Riverside County. I had him buy just a residential lot. He bought it. He, he went to the broker and said, look, I bought it at X, sell it here. So he did, made 20,000 bucks. The next one he bought, he bought in Washington State, he made over $130,000. Let me just show you that video. You'll be surprised. My name is Kelly Osmack, and I'm from Regina, Saskatchewan. I'm a Ted Thomas student. I had purchased a, a lot in Riverside County, at Riverside. Uh, I purchased it for $35,000. And uh, after I got my title, I listed it. It was listed for a month, and I got a full cash offer of $55,000 U.S. After that deal, I went to the uh, Kitsap County in Washington and purchased a five-acre parcel um, in uh, Kingston, and I paid $131,000 for that property. Uh, it's, it was a, had a 1,300-square-foot uh, manufactured home and a barn on the property. Really nice property. I had it listed at 280, and I received a full price offer in four days. I went back to Riverside because it's a great place. I love Riverside for whatever reason. In May, I bought another property. It's another. It's in Desert Hot Springs. It's uh, another five-acre parcel. It's it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's I I bought this property for one hundred and seventy-seven thousand dollars. Five acres of land. There's this house. There's there's a another nine hundred square foot nanny mother-in-law house. There's outbuildings. It's a beautiful property. I had a realtor go look at it, and he said, "Yeah, it's it's in like from the exterior. It's in looks like it's in decent shape. Depending what the inside is, he said it could range for anywhere from you know five hundred to eight hundred. I'll probably clear a hundred thousand U.S. on that deal. I've never left my basement office." ever. <laughs> All right, now there you have it. So he bought the first property. He bought it online. He bought it for pennies on the dollar. 
He just sold it quickly. Second property, he sold the property in four days. Now think about that. How are you going to sell in four days? Because he didn't try to get retail. He bought it. He sold it made $100,000 and got out. It was worth way more than that. The third one he did was a property that was valued at $800,000, but he didn't pay that for it. He paid $177,000, as you heard him say. Folks, this is a business that works, but you have to learn how to do it. So he did it in Riverside, California, in Washington. Should I stick to the bigger cities or should I go to the little counties? You know. Okay, okay. If you go to a big city, let me just show you. This is the list for Los Angeles County. This is the list. So in Los Angeles, they will have a thousand to two to twenty five hundred properties. Okay, a small county like this is this is one arm from New York City. This just county, and you can see they got a hundred hundred and thirty properties. Can you see it up there? Hundred thirteen properties. Every one of those properties, they, this is the brochure. I just printed this off the internet and it shows you pictures of it and gives you a description. But you don't want to buy from that. You want to go there. I mean, these are properties, these are colonial houses that have values of $400,000 and people buy them for $100,000. I mean, I bought online in New York. I spent $140,000 for the house and months later sold it for $280,000. You can do that. And you can do the whole damn thing online if you want. So, th- so I'm just showing you, this is just two counties. There's 3,000 counties in the United States. So there's a ton of tax certificates, tax liens. Over a, a million, over a million tax defaulted properties. The state of Florida has a million tax certificates. It's huge. It's There's so much abundance. Listen to my words. You won't believe me. They can't sell them all. They I was going to say. They never are able to sell them. There's always what, leftovers. What happens if they don't sell them? They put them on a leftovers list. And we teach people how to buy them on the leftover. There's no bidding on the leftovers list. You just go there and bid the minimum and you get it. So is there a minimum? Yeah, the county, the county is the county is selling the property for one reason only. Property taxes pay the county employees, pay to fix the roads, pay for the school teachers, pay for the police department, pay for the fire de- fighters. All right, so the county is selling this property to get the money to pay them. The county doesn't want the property. So they can start the bidding at just the back taxes. That's all they want. Why, the why do tax lien certificates if I can get the, the uh, tax deeds, the, the property itself? Why, why not just, there's more money right, in the property, good. isn't there? You and I are people of means. We can take care of ourselves. We've already worked 50 years of our life. So we have substantial bidding money to do that. But the little guy, we teach people from Wisconsin to go over to Michigan and buy used and abused houses. They're worth 50 and 60,000. They buy them for 8,000 and sell them for 30,000. And they make themselves 25 grand. So okay. you can do whatever level you want. So if you want, if you and I, I'm not going to go buy a house where I'm going to make Twenty thousand dollars. I don't want to. I don't want to be at that level. But I'll go to this auction all day long, because they'll have of the hundred thirteen properties you see on that list. There'll be twenty five of those that are big colonial houses. Now, look, you're not going to buy a big colonial house and put a band aid on and sell it. It's going to take major surgery. You know, you're going to have to do life saving surgery. You're going to have to put a roof on it. You're going to have to fix it. But it's probably setting on four acres with big oak trees in a big circle driveway. So it's for the big boys. So this business is for the big boys, but I can't sell just to the big boys because nobody will get started. So you have to show the, I have to show the little deals at the same time. Okay, cool. Yeah. Now yeah. you're going to show us in a, in a, a one day seminar, are you? Or All right. Zoom so what we do is every month, every month we speak to people like yourself and say, if you want to send your clients to us, they can come to our event and they can stay with us all day. Now, there's no pitch all day long. Or the only time they ever can find out about, about the products that we sell is the last 15 minutes. Meanwhile, what we've done is we start at 11 o'clock in the morning. We're going to go all the way to 5 o'clock. And I bring different coaches that work for me into the, into the class. And we teach them how to buy tax liens, how to buy tax deeds, how to do everything that they need to know to make a decision 
they can do that in that six hour class. So we'll have like this next class that's coming up. You'll miss it, but you'll be in the October class. All right. We will have round numbers, 120 to 150 people show up for the class. And that happens every single month. Let's uh, let's take a break and we'll come back and we'll give you a third lesson in just a couple of minutes. All right. Thanks, Ted.